Okay, this is a video tutorial for the river meander migration modeling um, in the IRIC platform. It's tutorial number 11 and it's entitled Geometric Parameters Output by IRIC. This is a draft version of the tutorial. Um, I don't have all the answers. The question is with the large list of items that you see on the screen, what do they all mean? So I'm going to take a crack at this as a first step and we'll be following up with a more thorough, thorough video in the future, but I think I'll be able to answer 90 percent of the questions here. I'm going to take this in chunks and show you which chunk I use. I'm going to discuss these uh, first few items that are in red. First of all, for those of you who haven't dug into it, you need to know where they come from. They come from the files that are called bends that are output automatically by IRIC. And each one of these bends files includes uh, what you're about to see. Uh, this is one of the bends file and what it looks like if you opened it. I'm opening it in Notepad. Okay, the first column, bend and then number. What the program does is it identifies bends for you. Now it's a little bit of a mechanical process of course and I never end up trusting what it does, but it takes uh, one inflection point where the curvature goes to zero and then it finds the next time the curvature goes to zero and it calls that a bend. And then program does a set of analyses on that bend. And so the parameters that you see, beginning with start S, are parameters that relate to each individual bend. So, in bend number one, the start S is um, the coordinate where the bend begins. S is the downstream distance taken along the center line, and in this case it's in meters. So the start S of bend number 2 would be 310.849. Therefore, the arc length, or which is now column number 3 here, the arc length is 310.84. Okay, that explains uh, the first two. Line distance is the straight line distance between inflection points. Okay? So that means you just draw a straight line between them and you don't go on the curved path along center lines. Um, I'm going to jump the next two, entrance angle and exit angle, because sinuosity, which we have right here, is uh, the arc length divided by the line distance. I have a little picture here to show that. So L is the line distance. Of course this is much more curved than the one we were just dealing with, which was almost flat. And M is the uh, distance along the along the channel or the arc length. M is the arc length, L is the line distance, and then M over L is the sinuosity. Okay. Uh, the other two were entrance angle and exit angle. And the entrance angle is this angle right here between the tangent to the center line as it passes through the upstream inflection point and the line that connects the two inflection points. The exit angle is similar. It's the analogous thing, not drawn here, but be the analogous thing over here with a straight line here and that. So entrance angle and exit angle. And go back. So that's the start S, the arc length, the line distance, the sinuosity, 
the entrance angle and the exit angle. One thing that can be confusing is units. I'm going to do my best to keep those clear. Uh, the start S for each bend is in meters, which is what IRIC works in. The arc length will be in meters. The line distance will be in meters. Now the entrance and exit angles will be in radians. Important to note that, and you'll have to figure out what radians are if you don't usually work with those. The sinuosity is dimensionless. Okay, the next one is the average radius. Okay? Now, conceptually, the radius is the R that you see here, but the at, it changes at every point along the bend. So what we did for the average radius was to take the numeric average for the entire bend, calculated at nodes every quarter channel width through the bend. So to give you um, more information about how to remember these, here's some descriptions that I took from other places um, where it tells you what the mean radius of curvature is and describes some of the other values also. Now, I'm not absolutely sure, but I'm going to say that the average radius is in meters. Okay. Now the average curvature is 1 over the radius of curvature. So it's the inverse of, uh, of the radius. So 1 over average radius is average curvature. Okay, now I'm moving on to the next uh, bunch of values. And again, uh, those values are found in the bend file. And you remember I ended last time with average curvature. So I'm going to describe these now. Maximum curvature is exactly what it says. You go through the bend and you identify that section of the bend that's a quarter channel length width long and you identify what the maximum curvature is. Okay, now max curve sub s is the downstream location where the maximum curvature occurs. So it tells you where in the bend the maximum curvature is occurring. Okay, here's where I'm unclear about the dimensions. The u sub d, which you see in the next three columns, one of them's the average, one of them's the max, and one of them's the downstream location of the max, are the downstream velocity u. Okay? Now, the two things I'm not clear about is whether it's the perturbation from the mean, number one, and whether it's dimensioned or dimension less, number two. Okay. And you know what? I won't even guess. I'll just leave it at that. So the average u sub d would be the average velocity, downstream velocity, at the bank, mind you, for the whole bend, bend number one, two, three, etc. The next one is the maximum velocity through that bend, and of course the next one is the downstream location of that maximum velocity. Let me explain the things I'm unclear about. If it's the perturbation, it means it's how far away from the mean velocity it is. And if it's non-dimensioned, it means it's that divided by the velocity. I have the same issue with eta. 
but at least I can tell you what eta is here. Here you see a picture, a little fuzzy, but this is eta. And it means it's the it's a bed topography factor. This is a hypothetical cross section. It's actually a cross section as that would be outputted by the code. The code calculates cross sectional shape. And it does that by calculating a deviation from the mean depth. As you see, the mean depth here is h. The deviation from the mean depth is eta d. So the eta's that you see here, average max and the location downstream of the maximum, are a perturbation from the mean. And again, I'm not clear whether that's, I, I suspect it is the perturbation from the mean, but I don't know whether it's dimensioned or non-dimensioned. If it was dimensioned, it would be divided by the average, and if it was, I mean, in the non-dimension would be divided by the average, otherwise it would be just the, the value itself. Okay, moving right along, we have uh, other values here and that I will describe verbally. First of all, to let you know where they come from. These come out of the curvature file that's output um, by Eric. When you open it up, whoops, when you open it up, it looks like this. So, the question is, what do each of these columns mean? Okay, let's go one by one. The x is the x coordinate. Okay? And the y is the y coordinate of this particular center line. So this would be 2010. If we're doing a model, you might have 2050, and it would give you what the x and y coordinates were. So those are points. Each one of those are individual points. And then bend number lets you know that those points constitute bend number one. The next series of points constitute bend number two. And you can see there's a lot more points there in bend number two. The downstream distance s tells you exactly what the distance along the curved center line s is to that particular xy point. Okay? The curvature and the velocity perturbation and the bed topography perturbation are similar to what I've described before. In order to get this information out the door, I have not clarified whether those last three values are dimensioned or non-dimensioned. So the curvature would be the 1 over the radius of curvature at that particular point. Now the velocity perturbation is very clear here. It's the perturbation from the average. And I suspect it's dimensionless. And eta, the bed topography factor, again, I suspect it's the perturbation from the mean and that it's dimensionless. But I can't vouch for those dimensions. Okay? There you have it. It's a summary describing what each of those values means with some holes left in our knowledge that I need to clarify and get back to, um, which I will in a follow-up video as soon as I have time. Okay, thank you for watching.